In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the year of our Lord, 1224, two years prior to his death, St. Francis of Assisi withdrew from the world for a while to commune with God on the summit of Mount Alverna, a lonely mountain in the Apennines. He was accompanied by Brother Leo and a few others, but he chose a hut apart and gave instructions that no one was to come near him except Brother Leo when he brought him food or other necessities. This is how St. Bonaventure tells it. Quote, It was the custom of that angelic man, Francis, to be ever ascending toward God or stooping toward his neighbor. For he had learned so wisely to apportion the time granted unto him for merit that one part thereof he would spend in laboring for the profit of his neighbors. The other he would devote unto the peaceful ecstasies of contemplation. Therefore, when according to the demands of time and place, he had stooped to secure the salvation of others, he would leave behind the disturbances of throngs and seek a hidden solitude and a place for silence, wherein giving himself up more freely unto the Lord, he might brush off any dust that was clinging unto him from his converse with men. Accordingly, two years before he yielded his spirit unto heaven, the divine counsel leading him, he was brought after many and varied toils unto a high mountain apart that is called Mount Alverna. Close quote. St. Francis began a 40-day fast in honor of St. Michael the Archangel. One morning, close to the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, while in prayer upon the side of the mountain, he saw a remarkable apparition. Francis saw what appeared to be one of the seraphim angels, having six wings, glorious and fiery, flying to him from heaven. As the seraph drew nearer, Francis noticed that it was not only winged, but also crucified, for the hands and feet were stretched out and fastened to a cross, while the wings were arranged in a wondrous manner, two being raised above the head, two outstretched in flight, and the remaining two were crossed over and wrapped around the body. When Francis saw it, he was amazed, and his soul was filled with both sorrow and joy. For the eyes of the seraph were full of strange love and tenderness, which brought Francis a great rejoicing. But the nail into the cross was so exceedingly dreadful that as Francis saw it, a sword of sorrow pierced his soul. The seraph began to speak silently to Francis's heart, and Francis understood that, albeit the deathless seraphim cannot suffer or faint, this vision was nevertheless set before him, that he might know that as a friend of Christ, he was to be all changed into the likeness of Christ Jesus crucified, not by the martyrdom of the body, but by the fervor of the soul. The two held together some sweet converse. Then the vision passed from Francis, but his heart was kindled inwardly with the fire of the seraphim, and his body was outwardly changed into the likeness of him who was crucified. Francis's hands and feet seemed bored through in the middle with four wounds, and these holes appeared to be pierced with nails or hard flesh. There was also on his right side a red wound, as if made by the piercing of a lance, and from which blood often flowed, staining his tunic and underclothing. Francis understood that just as he had imitated Christ in the deeds of his life, so now God willed that as his death approached, he would be made like unto Christ in the sufferings and wounds of our Lord's passion. St. Bonaventure writes, quote, The true love of Christ had transformed Francis into the same image. And after Francis had spent 40 days in solitude, as he had determined, when the feast of St. Michael Archangel came, 
This angelic man, Francis, descended from the mountain, bearing with him the likeness of the crucified, engraven not on tables of stone or of wood by the craftsman's hand, but written on his members of flesh by the finger of the living God. Close quote. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.